Hey there, hi there, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond, welcome to another Degrassiism. And last video I talked about the top 10 Degrassi friendships. Well, guess what? Reverse Uno card. It's now time for the top 10 worst Degrassi friendships of all time. So anyway, just like the top, I went with a poll. Like I asked in a post, the worst friendships. I actually named six of them myself because I knew about the bad friendships more so than the good friendships. And then I found four that added on to my six to make ten and then two posts of five top three in each poll moved on to the worst six or the top six if you will and then at seven to ten would be me so anyway here we go m number 10 on the list was marisol and katie now some people argue that marisol and katie were good friends and all that but i mean when marisol decides to use katie's eating disorder against her and basically undercut katie i just can't see it so, to me, it's like Marisol and Katie should not have had everything happening. But, yeah, it was a humongous thing with Marisol and Katie. I mean, Katie let Marisol get under her skin and all that. And Katie was in a bad friendship with Marisol and let it happen. That reminded... And then when, when her sister had the number three worst... Degrassi friendship of all time, it reminded everyone that, you know, what is with Katie and her sister being doormats and all that. But yeah, I mean, Marisol and Katie did bad stuff to each other and both forgave each other, but still, it just doesn't cut the mustard. But of course, it did not make the top three in their poll, so that's why they were not in the top six. Number nine on the list with, that is Paige and Terry. Now, I could also slash, Paige slash Terry slash Hazel, because to me, Paige seemed to be a terrible friend to Terry and Hazel. Like, basically, forcing Terry and Hazel to choose her over Ashley in season two was just terrible. I mean, Ashley did some wrong. She was trying to fix things, but Paige was not helping her out. I made an unpopular opinion that Paige was responsible for Ashley's downfall. Because, I mean, Paige wouldn't give Ashley the time of day and basically spread her queen bee status and everything. And, you know, Hazel not being involved, too not really moving up in the social hierarchy too but i went with Paige and terry because you know that was the emphasis for season three with terry's relationship with um rick because Paige was worried that terry should not be with rick after all rick did hurt her but this was before they came back together i mean pa uh, terry and rick did break off once but yeah Paige was worried about terry and all that since rick in a rage rick walks off from the road trip and Terry tries to calm him down and that's when Terry gets the head on the rock but Paige was a good friend to Terry because she was helping Terry out with the aftermath of being hurt by Rick and all that Paige blamed herself for not letting for not protecting Terry now one thing I'll say about Rick is he was right about the fact that he he was right to be upset that Terry was just under Paige's shadow I mean, Paige basically used Terry and Hazel to try to get her own weight and all that. And they were scared to go against Paige and become outsiders like Ashley. So it seemed like a terrible relationship and all that. Although Paige would try to get make it up for, to Terry after Terry was put in that coma. But still, I mean, Rick was right. His hate of Paige was not just because of what happened with the whole bullying situation, but because... He figured that Paige was just a bully to Terry. And I made a couple of unpopular opinions about it. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, number eight on the list was David Wesley. I was actually shocked this didn't make the top six. When I look at the top six, I'm actually shocked that I would have probably put David Wesley ahead of one of the season nine friendships. But the simple fact is David and Wesley were just not that good together. I mean, Dave was just a brash guy who wanted to make high school memorable and all that. And Wesley was this very nerdish person who basically ended up like Toby having a few good episodes and then just basically vanishing. Although Dave and Wesley were part of the three tenors, as in the, the music group, alongside Connor. It was good. But Dave, after stealing his dad's taser because his dad was a cop and patrolling Degrassi for a while, tasered Wesley and it was like what the heck is going on Dave I mean to do that to Wesley bleh poor Wesley I feel for him number seven on the list 
is Jimmy and Spinner. Now, of course, I'm a little bit shocked this didn't make the list and all that. Didn't make the top six, but, you know, their friendship was terrible. I mean, you take away the events of season four, it was kind of shadow, shallow, lecker. But here's why. So Jimmy and Spinner were close friends and all that. But it seemed that Spinner had envy over Jimmy's wealth and all that. You know, Jimmy always getting the, the fake stuff and Spinner not really getting much. Spinner steals Jimmy's MP3 player, wants to sell it, but then has a change of heart. And Jimmy's not too happy with Spinner stealing it in the first place. You know, Spinner and Jimmy's friendship was just terrible in a sense that, you know, well, Spinner gave Jimmy that ADD pill that caused a lot of trouble. Jimmy to injure his own teammate while trying to make an important shot and Spinner mooning the school without his pill and Raj forcing him to take medication in front of him for the rest of his life. I don't know. But yeah, so that friendship was just on the rocks. I mean, yeah, they both were bullies towards Rick and they both dumped Rick into that dumpster. Of course, the friendship had some issues because Jimmy switched sides and sided with Rick, knowing that Rick's torment, Rick's been tormented a lot enough, and the fact that Toby was going to get the downfall too. So Spitter, I know, was not happy that Jimmy switched sides. Neither was Jay. So Spitter and Jimmy's friendship was terrible. Spitter does tell Jimmy that he did the paint and feathers thing. No, like on the basketball court. People forget about that scene that Spinner brags to Jimmy about the pain and feathers. They have a literal fight. Armstrong picks it up and instead of sending them to the principal's office, they walk they walk towards each other. They're close to each other. Like they walk close to each other. And then of course, you know, Jimmy gets shot thanks to Spinner and Jay coursing Rick somehow to go after Jimmy. Rick shoots Jimmy. Now remember, if Rick wanted to kill Jimmy, he would have shot him in the head, but he got Jimmy in the spine. So, of course, Spinner has the big rack of guilt, and then Jay convinces him not to go to the 40s and all that. So, Spinner tries to make things up with Jimmy in Eye of the Tiger, and then finds out that the best way to help Jimmy is to tell the truth. And, of course, he gets chastised for it properly, and Jimmy basically busts Spinner, saying that, you didn't do it. You didn't confess everything to to me to help me out. You did it to alleviate your own guilt. And then, of course, you know, Jimmy and Spinner break off his friends. Spinner is expelled. Spinner tries his best to try to get Jimmy to talk to him, and he does at the end of Season 5. Great redemption arc by Spinner. I mean, you could also put, like, Spinner and Jay as worse friendships because, you know, Spinner listening to Jay and all that and just basically me under Jay's friendship. But then Spinner, in the middle of Season 5, blasts Jay, saying that, you know, if I wasn't with you, Jimmy would have been walking. And all that. That kind of did jumpstart Jay's redemption because, I mean, Jay lost Spinner, his best ally. But yeah, Spinner and Jimmy were back to being friends and all of that. Pretty cool. Alright, so that is the bottom four. Now the top six and 429 votes in this poll. I think it's a record. But I'll tell you right now, there's a clear sixth place. There was actually a dog fight for top three and spots four and five. There were dog fights. Anyway, here we go. Number six with 41 votes was JT and Toby from seasons one to six. Now, I'm actually shocked this didn't rank higher. I would put it at number four and switch number six out, but rules are rules. So here's what happens in this thing. And yes, I will actually have a screen, a screenshot of the thing you know, trying to say what the voting results are, just in case you don't believe me. But anyway, yeah, JT and Toby were the great relationship. You know, they were they were summer camp people, like the same summer camp, and then they bumped each other at the start of Next Gen, like the first episode. And, you know, they have wacky ventures with each other, JT being kind of the immature one, Toby trying to being, well, Toby being the outcast and all that. But yeah, they were trying to capture the magic of Yick and Arthur from the original series. But by season two, it seemed like there were cracks in the friendship. I mean, after all, JT was trying to help Toby eliminate his eating disorder because Toby had the eating disorder when he was trying to impress Kendra. 
with stuff. And Toby wanted to lose weight to impress her and also to join the wrestling team so that he's not just a nerd and people will not ignore him anymore. But of course that falls flat. JT tries to tell Toby what you're doing is stupid and all that. Toby says, I gotta do what I gotta do. But then Toby collapses, gets kicked off the wrestling team for cutting weight and all that. And JT tells Toby that you weren't really being ignored. Everyone freaked out. Even Sean did. So, and Kendra too. Now do you feel like door topes? But yeah, that was a good spot. But by season three, JT was hanging around Paige and the popular crew. I mean, he was in commercials and all that. And Toby was just distraught and all that. Of course, JT and Toby were not completely good friends in season four. I mean, JT did mature and try to move on. But JT had the penis pump and hanging hang down around Danny a lot more than Toby, which basically left Toby wide open for Rick to befriend. And Toby and Rick were kind of friends and all that. Toby was struggling to understand why Rick would take a gun and attempt to kill Emma before Sean saved the day. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, JT was not close to Toby and all that. And in Black and Black in the subplot, Manny chews JT out saying that if you didn't spend time with Webster, aka Danny, then Toby would not have felt the need to gravitate towards Rick and all that. And he can't be the bigger man. Fortunately for Toby, JT does come to the visitation of Rick and does tell Toby that it's, it doesn't matter what I think about Rick. This should never have happened in the first place. You know, JT basically blasting Toby with nasty comments saying that Rick should go to another school and your best friend shot someone. How was I supposed to know? JT and Toby became fast friends and, you know, they were okay in season five, but by season six, you know, Toby told JT to go after Liberty instead of Mia. And JT says, you're always right, Tobes. And of course, JT gets stabbed in the aorta. Toby had no clue about that, but Toby had a lot of guilt about that. And then they just basically relegated him to comedy relief in a sense. It wasn't even in the season seven intro, so yeah. All right. Number five with 61 votes is Derek and Danny from seasons five to eight. Now, this was a very tumultuous relationship. It started out okay. Like, you know, Danny being Liberty's brother and Derek being someone that they were involved in the Liberty pregnancy thing. Because Derek asked Liberty, was it hard to give up the kid? Because, you know, Liberty gave up the kid for adoption after giving birth to a baby boy. Liberty's not too happy, but Derek says that, you know, I was adopted too. I know the pain about adoption. Get out, Liberty says. Yeah, Derek and Danny were basically going to try to be the new JT and Toby. Or even Dick and Arthur because of the mixed amnesties. They both get blasted by Perino in season six for an incident, a small incident. Derek getting harassed a lot more than Danny is. And, well, Perino loses it, and then Snake loses it on Perino. Yeah, Danny and Derek were decent, but unfortunately, things were getting huge. Danny and Derek would fight over Leia, and then, well, the worst part was season seven, In what THT guy said was the worst episode was when De Derek framed Danny for a crime, for stealing something, just to get a girl from Lakehurst, and that seemed pathetic. Derek was slipping off the rails. A lot of people actually don't have the sympathy towards Derek with the whole Perino thing in season six. But the problem is, Derek was not as bad as a person as he was in season seven and eight, especially being a massive douche, douche to Jimmy. Well, Jimmy's being the assistant coach of the basketball team and also the fact that, you know, harassing Jane on the, for the football team. Yeah, Danny deserved better. Number four on the list is Jenna and Claire from season nine. So, with well, 63 votes. So that was close for fourth and fifth. But anyway, yeah, Jenna and Claire were see, there. Jenna was not introduced with the gifted class in season eight. You know, Claire was with Casey, Ali, and Connor to basically make a core four from season one, which I I said in previous videos had the JT, Toby, Emma, and Manny dynamic. But of course, I'm not completely correct because with Casey being a bad boy and all that, you could take away... Uh, JT for Sean, I guess, because Connor was supposed to be the Toby, Allie was supposed to be the Manny, and Emma, Claire was supposed to be the Emma of the, the whole thing. But Jenna in season nine is introduced, and Jenna then finds out things with Casey. Claire's like, why is Casey with Jenna? And basically Jenna laughs in Claire's face and says, you know, 
I'm a boyfriend stealer, even though that Jenna's a good friend to Claire in most parts. Jenna, calm down a little bit. I know her relationship with Casey was bad because, you know, they had Ty and then they had to give him up because of an incident with a change table and all that. But yeah, Claire kind of deserved better than to hang around Jenna. Okay, number three on the list with 85 votes, my birth year, shows you my age, huh, is Maya and Tristan from season 12 to 14. Remember when I talked about Katie and Marisol and I said Katie's sister? Yep, you guessed it. So anyway, Maya and Tristan had a bad friendship. I mean, Tristan, remember, once upon a time, was chubby and had weird fashion sense. But then he tried to fast for a guy and then collapsed and he stayed skinny and all that. Of course, it was a fat suit. But still, yeah, Maya was someone who was just coming off being hurt by Cam's suicide and being with Sig and all that, that weird love triangle. Remember, it's not relationships, it's friendships. So anyhow, so Maya and Tristan were close, but then in season 13, there was a massive crack because... You know, Tristan was being groomed by Yates and all that. And Maya saw that and needed to help Tristan out by exposing Yates. And Yates was going to go after Winston as well. And Yates got in trouble. And Tristan says, why did you do that? You have plenty of boys to go around. And you can't stand it with me and probably Miles, being with Miles. Maya says, I had to help. Screw off, says Tristan. So anyhow, that was trouble. Like, Maya and Tristan were good friends in Paris because Tristan wanted Maya to be his girlfriend so that it hides Tristan's homosexuality. The worst part about this was that Tristan and Maya were back friends from season 14 only after she apologized to him. Tristan made Maya grovel to him. Pathetic. I can't stand it. I'm sorry. And, you know, when they, they had that bus crash at the end of season 2 of Next Class, you know, Maya was upset Tristan was in a coma. And Maya said that people around her were getting hurt. And then that was when she had that season-long depression that almost killed her. Killed her. Like, she almost died because of that. But yeah, uh, very toxic indeed. And people said that, why are Katie and Matt, Maya being doormats, in a sense? All right. But anyway, number two of 89 votes, told you how close it was, was Emma and Manny seasons one to nine. I was shocked. I would be shocked. I thought this was definitely number one. Everyone's talking about it on the Degrassi Reddits. And of course, it's being taped April 29th, 2023. The past two weeks have been full of the Emma Manny relationship shit. I'm surprised that's not number one. It's not? Well then, there's a C duel to be made soon. I promise you. But as is, yeah, Emma and Manny seasons one to nine. Where to start and where to talk? Yeah, season one. Good friendship, decently, but then cracks hit, especially when Manny wanted to join the Power Squad, and Emma is not too happy with cheerleading and all that, and Manny, Manny goes out for a gets a spot, and then Paige says, we're not sexist, we're going to have boys on the team, and Emma's like, it doesn't matter, girls are, cheerleaders are made to be bimbles, it's not about gender, it's about sex, sexism, and Emma's right. But unfortunately, there was a crack in it. But they still become friends. Season two, you know, Emma has her tr triggered face. May tries to help Emma out, especially after Emma finds out that Spike's pregnant and wants to abort the kid, saying, I don't want a second mistake. And Emma is hot under the collar. Manny tries to calm Emma down, saying that, you know, everything will be better in the morning. But out. And, you know, Emma goes to tell Snake about the whole. Spike and Manny chews her out saying that you just couldn't let it go. I had to do what was right and you're not supporting me? Thanks for being a friend, Manny. And Emma blows steam. And it doesn't help that Manny asked Sean to go to Spike and Snake's wedding and you know the whole thing with Sean and Emma breaking off in season one. But then you know season three comes about and you know my uh, Manny decides to dress promiscuously dress a little more sexy for Sully after Paige says that Sully doesn't put out for cuteness. And then, you know, Manny doing all that with the low riding pants and the underwear outside her, the thong outside her pants. Never mind, it's underwear. It's a thong. Raj chews her out for the school's dress code. People thought he was prudish. Nope. Schools have that rule. No underwear outside the pants. And that's for guys, too. 
pathetic. So then Manny decides to go commando, no underwear, but JT saves her butt. Emma, I think, was trying to get JT to go with Manny because JT had a crush on Manny. He bumped himself into a few objects. Look at Manny's cuteness. Manny's not too pleased with Emma's stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, there were problems. Especially with the fact that Emma wanted to go after Chris, but then finds out that Chris has a girlfriend and pulls off. Manny tells Chris, oh, well, Manny knows Chris is DJing at a rave. And Emma's like, I can't hurt this relationship. It's, that's too evil. And Manny says, go for it. So Emma stay, Emma's there, but then Emma decides to leave. Can't find Emma, uh, Manny and Craig. And then finds out that Manny and Craig were having sex in her bed. Like, how else would you react to that? But, you know, uh, Manny says, you're one to talk. You stayed at the thing for Chris. And Emma says, no, I left because I couldn't do that. And then Emma gives Manny the ultimatum. Either you, you gotta call, tell him the, the to, toning the sexuality down a bit, or we're not friends. And Manny says, I'd rather not be friends with you. And then Emma says, you don't want to be friends? And Manny says, not to a stuck a prudish princess like you. And Emma snaps back saying, well, fine, I don't want to be friends with the school slut. I mean, yeah, it hurt. And yeah, Emma, People say, oh, Emma was terrible about that. But Emma had a point. Manny should not be sexualizing herself for anybody. I get it with Emma. I really do. I like Emma, you know, trying to protect Manny from herself. It just didn't seem right. So they stopped being friends for a while in season three. But then Emma and Manny, you know, have the problems talking about uh, the Manny having an abortion and Emma being anti-abortion and not too pleased with it. But... Emma steps up for Manny and tells Craig that Manny should not get the abortion, but she's my best friend, and her body, it's her body, it's her choice. And Manny is shocked that Emma would stoop to that level. But I think that Emma might have wanted to be Emma, Manny's friend and all that, but people told me, no, nah, they were still, they were, they were back to being friends before that. And then season four, you know, Emma loses Manny as a friend because of her pettiness towards Liberty being with Chris. Manny was willing to help Emma. Get Chris. And Emma says, I don't really want Chris. I just don't want Chris being liberty because how does that affect me? And then Manny's like, I can't believe you made that statement and you've made weird, sta terrible statements and talking about, you know, the abortion thing. So Manny stops being friends with Emma after realizing things. Emma is left alone, tries to get into Paige's good, clicks good books by helping get rid of Rick, but that fails miserably. And Emma is basically on a lonely island with only the quiz team of Rick. Toby and Heather Sinclair to help her. And then, of course, Jimmy replaces Heather. So that friendship went to shit. But thankfully, by by secret in season four, Manny was trying to help Emma get over her problems because Emma was with Jay and the Ravine and all that, the gonorrhea thing. Jane inadvertently got Emma in trouble because of gonorrhea. But, you know, she helped Emma out. And then season five was just terrible about Emma being a friend with Manny. It's just like, holy crow. Like, Manny's at a party, Emma, and finds out that Emma's flirting with someone. Manny gets drunk and then gets it taken advantage by Peter with a video and all that. Emma's pissed off, you know, with, when Manny's topless video comes out. Not because Manny bared her bras, but because of the background, and she knew he was she was with Peter. And, like, Manny's trying to steal Peter from me. What are you doing? But... Emma wised up after realizing a lot of things. You know, Emma always jumps to conclusions and then helps Manny out when Manny gets thrown out of her house in season, to start season five and lets Manny stay with her. Well, unfortunately, Emma takes advantage of the friendship by going out with Peter anyway, even though that, you know, she was trying to help Manny get revenge on Peter, but then Emma was wooed with Peter's shirtless picks. I'll get more into it when I do my scene duel about this. But yeah, Emma and Manny's friendship. Season six, it was disastrous especially in the wake of the JT stabbing because Emma because Manny was going to look, go back home and Emma tried to get Manny to listen to her pleas for help to do with the JT stabbing thing but it didn't work out and then Emma became terrible and wanted to destroy Manny and was upset when Manny was and blew off a girl's night just to be with Damien who was supposed to be the who was the stu school president student president of Lakehurst, and Mia called him out on him saying that, wait a minute, you have a connection with Drake Lampley. Your family does. Have you heard anything from him? And Manny's pissed off with Emma. 
Emma does the Goho Lakers thing. Degrassi still wins the competition, but I think they had to forfeit it. I don't know. But, you know, Manny was upset with Emma doing this. And Emma says, it doesn't matter. You helped us win. But then, of course, Snake and Manny tell Emma that, you know, you got to calm down. I know you're hurt about the JG situation. I know you probably have guilt. But, you know, Emma and Manny are supposed to be good friends. And, you know, Emma and Manny were good friends. But then, you know, Emma became a clinging friend to Manny. So much so that she managed to get Manny and Liberty in season 8 to room with her in college. Just terrible. And Manny probably had the best opportunity when she got the Hollywood job to leave Emma high and dry. But Emma came, Manny came back for Emma and Spinner's beach wedding. Okay, so that's that. But number one with 90 votes. Wow. First and second were off by one vote. Now a tie would be broken by me personally. And I would have went with Emma and Manny number one. But number one, just by an inch with 90 votes, is Anya and Holly J. I kind of figured this was it, but because of the whole Emma and Manny hot, hot fuzz, like hot takes with the Degrassi Reddit, I figured that was number one. But nope, I was off by just a smidge. Anya and Holly J. And yeah, of course, I would have voted for Emma and Manny being number one. So, yeah, so Anya and Holly J, just terrible. Holly J, just forcing Anya to be her servant, in a sense, a slave. That's how I feel about it, fighting on that. But, yeah, season seven, you know, they came over from Lakers to Degrassi, and Holly J was getting Anya into trouble for lots of things, basically tr making Anya a scapegoat. Anya blasts Holly J at an event, saying, why do you pick on me? Because you let me. And then Anya basically blasts Holly J a lot. And I think Holly J was just trying to save her butt, trying to get under Anya's skin. But Anya blew off the friendship. And then they were still together by season eight. It was like, she just can't let it go. As much as you want to shit on Anya for being with Holly J and staying with on Holly J, I mean, Anya probably did it for protection and all that. That unfortunately kind of reminds me of Paige and, I mean, Terry and Hazel to do with Paige in seasons two and three. But yeah, it's just bad bad memories. And then you know you got yourself a big situation when you know, Holly J asks Anya to throw Sav's attempt at student presidency off in season 10 by saying that she's pregnant with Sav's child and all that. So that, you know, Holly J could win. However, Anya turned it around on Holly and said that, you know, with Sav, we lost a baby, getting the sympathy that probably got Sav into the student presidency, leaving Holly J pissed off that Anya turned the tide on Holly J. And Holly, it was P I double S E D. Indeed. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Holly J asked for it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to bake it. But yeah, I really hated the Anya Holly J thing. Anya dressing like Holly J, I guess trying to get fit in with the popular crowd and all that. Anya doing whatever it took. You know, Anya having her issues, her self-esteem issues, just being pathetic. Especially Sav ruining her self-esteem at times. I feel for Anya. I really do. But the fact of the matter is that Holly J was kind of a dick. And all that. And probably Holly J needed Anya as a friend because she couldn't make friends in the first place. Yes, Holly J got one of the top 10 friendships in my other video, the top 10 friendships with Fiona. But the simple fact is that, you know, Holly J was a dick and all that. I feel bad for Anya. I really do. So that's all I've got about that. And, you know, I got a future C duel coming up soon. I'm trying to hit 200 and then I'm probably going to say, fuck it, that's it. Fuck it, chicken nugget. But anyway, I wasted almost 30 minutes of your time. I'm sorry, but that's the way it goes, the polling, and yes, at the end of the video will be the polling numbers, just to make sure that you know that the numbers are legit. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond, I do. All right, so that's what you got. That's the top six and how close it was. Very good voting by everybody. So yeah, thanks for helping me out.